Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is Daryl Guberman, CEO of Guberman PMC LLC, a quality consulting firm here in Connecticut. Uh, my background is uh, aerospace, uh, medical implants, medical materials, printing and plastic distribution, where we dealt with all industries. My education, I have a BS degree in business management. I have five technical diplomas in principles of metallography, heat treatment, non-ferrous metals, aluminum titanium alloys, composite plastics, non-radar reflective materials. And uh, today, uh, this video is about EMF radiation, which is electrical magnetic field radiation. And uh, this is very important because this will screw up your body. Uh, without a doubt. Let me just read what comes off the National Institute of Health. And by the way, the National Institute of Health sits on the American National Standards Institute board by many corporations and of other federal agencies. We will get to that in this video. First off, I want to apologize for the time that this is going to take, but I need to educate you. And as Thomas Paine said several hundred years ago, he said, when speaking the truth, it is many times like administering medication to the dead, and I hope that you ladies and gentlemen are not dead, but you will discover, as I develop this, you will discover that electromagnetic radiation, or EMF, are very bad for you. What does EMF radiation do to the body? EMFs influence me metabolic processes in the human body and exert various biological effects on cells through a range of mechanisms. EMF disrupts the chemical structures of tissues since a high degree of electromagnetic energy absorption can change the electric current in the human body. A gentleman, a Rudolf Steiner in 1924, wrote this little tiny snippet, and I want to read it to you to develop this story more for you. Because <clears throat> this story today, the title, Carroll Electric Cooperative Corporation, a history of poisoning as a member-owned cooperative. Attorney General Tim Griffin, he's here in the wings. Of course, the former Attorney General, uh, Leslie uh, um, Rutledge, is also here in the wings, and some other people. Basically, Carroll Electric Cooperative Corporation, a history of poisoning as a member uh, co owned cooperative AG or Attorney General Tim uh, Griffin, Arkansas, is impotent due to ANSI affiliation QA expert Daryl Government exposes. A quote from Rudolf Steiner said this This life of men in the midst of electricity, notably radiant electricity, will presently affect them in such a way that they will no longer be able to understand the news which they receive so rapidly. The effect is to damp down their intelligence. Such effects are ready to be seen today. Even today, you can notice how people understand things that come to them with far greater difficulty than they did a few decades ago. And you will have down below in the description many articles, a recent, uh, a recent press release, a lead, uh, a lead release on a brain fog. You please read that because some people have been saying that within the context of the COVID vaccine, uh, that there is graphene, which is no more than graphite, and graphite is a wonderful, uh, how should we say, it's a wonderful antenna. It's a wonderful conductor of electricity. And uh, we have seen, I'm sure you've seen people that have been affected uh, by brain fog. So we're gonna introduce, the first person here is Tim Griffin, the present Attorney General of Arkansas. He is part of the National uh, Association of Attorney Generals, which we'll show you shortly which is involved in the Department of Homeland Security, standardization, writing, and all this other happy horse shit of ANSI, the American National Standards Institute, which is a private, not-for-profit, non-governmental entity that has both corporations and federal agencies on board. We also have Leslie Rutledge. Uh, Leslie Rutledge. And um, <clears throat> she is now the, uh, as of 2023, she's the lieutenant governor, but she too, was involved with the National Association of Attorney Generals. We have Kim Armstrong, investigator at uh, the Attorney General's uh, office, which basically the attorney, she wrote and said, get a private uh, concern. They did the same thing with me in Connecticut with a Mr. George Jepson, who was the Attorney General back in 2017. Uh, I had a problem with a CONSTEP, a NIST MEP, a manufacturing extension, a partnership organization, which are 50 strong throughout the United States. One of their employees wrote an unsavory uh, email concerning my business. 
Uh, he also said that we are very well connected, like they're in the mob, which they are. I have a letter from one of their employees, former employees that said, you know, we non-for-profits, when I worked for NIS MEP in the sh- Chicago area, because there's, as I said, 50 strong in all these different states, she said we jokingly would call uh, borrowing and lending money, money laundering. They're an organization, NIST MEP, that gets in both state and federal funding that 64.85% goes to pay their management, uh, employees, and bonuses. Well, we have Kim kissing the tuckus of the Attorney General. Yes, she is. Believe your lie and make it real big, and that's it. Sorry, Kim, put you down over here. The next is the attorney. This is a joke. The attorney of the actual electric company. Her name is Linda Lamb. Well, as you know, many of you who have taken the shot because Albert Borla, the CEO of Pfizer, is a certified veterinarian when they called you sheep. (laughs) So I'm correlating the name, but I want to say this. Linda, yes, I'm, I'm using your likeness in this video. You want to send a cease and desist to me? Go right ahead because ANSI is also involved, ladies and gentlemen, with the American Bar Association. They're in bed together. On top of that, you know who else ANSI has on their board? The FBI and DOJ. So go ahead and send it, okay? Because this is truthful and succinct. This is no conspiracy theory here. We notified Ken Paxton, another impotent attorney general. We sent him many articles because he is supposedly suing Pfizer. But Pfizer sits on ANSI. ANSI has the Department of Homeland Security and the National Association of Attorney Generals sits on the ANSI Department of uh, Homeland Security kind of working together. Isn't that nice? We want to show you what ANSI, we want you to listen to what ANSI is made of. But first I will say this. This is going to be a long video. I need to show this to you because you need to see it. The first is we exposed an organization called A2LA, which is a accreditation body for laboratory. We exposed them saying that they sit on ANSI's you know, site as a member. One of A2LA's employees got up and said underneath the video, a Miss Ashley Morton said, Mr. Guberman, ANSI and A2LA are separate entities. As you can see, they're not. And they're even on the IAF. Now, you will see that the IAF at this time between 2015 and 21 were watched over by a communist Chinese national. We have him here, a Zhao Jinwu, who at the time was not only the chairman of the IAF, watching over American companies like Lockheed because they sat on ANSI and ANAB's board. And we went further, and it's just disgusting, sitting on the IAF at the time and still, an American organization incorporated in Delaware is Iran and Pakistan, which are equivalent in accreditation to ANAB. You can't make this shit up. You have a Miss uh, Pamela Sale. Now, between that time of 2015 and 21, Zhao Jinwu is also the chief executive of the China National Accreditation Services in Beijing, China. He was the guy who certified the suspect lab in Wuhan, China, that released the COVID uh, COVID virus. And you have Ms. Pamela Sale confessing to the release in this deposition in 2017 because of a lab impropriety. And it goes like this. One of the issues is that there is no commonly agreed upon set of standards that forensic labs, phlebotomy labs, or bio level four labs around the country or world have to follow. Instead, there are informal guidelines that labs can choose to follow or not. So I added phlebotomy labs, bio level four labs, and of course the forensic lab she did. But all these laboratories are getting certifications by A2LA, by ANSI, and by ASCLD, which is owned by ANSI ANAB. Disgusting. ANSI ANAB, uh, ANSI took over complete control over ANAB in 2000. And 18. Now I'm going to let you listen to this. When I put that out and expose the fact of A2LA, there was a guy, a chairman no less, of ANSI. His name is Ross Cheney. At the time, he was making $356,000 as a royalty payment plus his salary running this organization that he ran, other than uh, ANSI. Let me let you listen to what he said to me. Mm-hmm. 
I will let you listen to this now. Technical, isn't it? Here it is. A technical issue. Yes, he said half a nut, fuck you. And their attorney said he didn't hear anything on Jameson Carroll. What that means is as a chairman, all of these federal agencies and corporations that sit on ANSI, take their mantra and run with it, means that they agree with Russ Cheney. He's the chairman. He's the, he's the guiding light that sets the tone of the corporation. I went down and I picketed them with this sign because it's true. ANSI says half a nut, fuck you. In 2022, I applied, no less, because I figured maybe I could change your mantra. Uh, with this 54-page document, 16 pages of complimentary letters from my customers, and I thought that they'd have a demonstrative deed, and I had to answer nine questions. At the bottom of the ninth question, guess who was the chairman of the nominating committee? It was no other than Russ Cheney. Yes, Russ Cheney was the nominating chairman. Now this was three years later and he still had a half a nut fuck you on him. <laughs> Unbelievable. Now we're gonna get to this. <clears throat> Very important. You have ANSI's Homeland Security Standards Panel where you have the National Association of Attorney Generals sitting on board. Let me just turn this around right up there, okay? And they're sitting on, on the board. You have Pfizer, Johnson Johnson sitting on ANSI. You have, I showed you uh, uh, Paxton, you know, Attorney General Paxton out of Texas suing Pfizer. Nothing's ever gonna happen because the National Association of Attorney Generals are in bed with the Department of Homeland Security and they sit on the ANSI's board. So we're gonna go through this and show this to you. You have the Department of Homeland Security that sits on ANSI's board. Between 2015 and 21, they've been watched over by communist China. They were hacked. At that time also, a Mr. Randy Dory, who we're gonna show you, was sitting on the Department of Homeland Security as a representative of ANAP being advertised on a federal agency. I thought there was a separation between private enterprise and federal agencies, but I guess since they're paying Department of Homeland Security some salary like this, Okay, as you can see, it is $262,814. And that's not for profit, that's a royalty payment at the time when this was taken. You also have the factor, I told you about the NIST MEPs, 50 strong in all the states. The NIST are a, uh, uh, are a division of the Department of Commerce along with the National Voluntary Lab Program, NVLP. And the thing about it is, that, uh, the thing about it is, is this, is that <clears throat> they certified the Dominion voting machine. So the Department of Commerce is very much involved with the Dominion voting machine. So don't let anybody kid you. But the NIST is very interesting because they have the NIST MEPs. And you have the NIST MEPs. You have the Attorney General, as I told you, about George Jepson in Connecticut. At the time, he was the president of the National Association of Attorney Generals, 2017 or so. And he wasn't going to do anything because... NIST is up in Hartford, you know, Bristol area, okay? NIST, NIST MEP, CONSTEP is up there, and they're all wheeling and dealing. I've got pictures of Blumenthal. I've got pictures of Murphy, uh, Chris Murphy. I got, you know, it's terrible. And then they're also bribing another guy from uh, Gordon Gillerman who sits on NIST. You also have Pfizer. Pfizer, and this is funny because they sit on ANSI board, as I said, ANSI took over complete control over ANAP in 2018. And look, they skip quality processes and standards. They sit on the Dalai Lamas of certification and voluntary consensus standards. By the way, Joe Bathia is retiring this year, December 2024. But before he goes, 
I will be going down to Washington in the springtime. I'm just warning you, Joe. Go get your pen ready. Go get that because I'll be on the sidewalk again uh, down there in Washington, D.C. You have Johnson & Johnson who also skip quality processes and standards. This is a fun one for the smart meters. Smart meters are so that they don't have a guy coming up to read it anymore. Or at one time, they let you read it with a card and send it back to the organization, send it back to the company. Now they just drive by by their car and that signal, that radiation is so powerful that they can pick it up in their car. And you know who sits on there too? The IEEE. The IEEE sits on there. It's one of the organizations that also gave uh, Charles Lieber, I think the designer, developer, and scientist of the COVID virus, who worked as the uh, chairman of the chemistry department at Harvard University, he got arrested. Uh, you don't hear about him anymore, but he was on the t Chinese talent plan. That is, for those people who don't know, China goes around and gets the intellectuals of these different AV League schools, get the creme de la creme of the universities, and use them as their talent plan, grabbing our knowledge and paying them royal payments. IEEE gave them uh, a wonderful award. So did NIH. They sit on ANSI's board too. And uh, Charles Lieber was a specialist, or is a specialist, in nanotechnology, both biological and electronic. These organizations use a wonderful term called obfuscation, which is distorting the action of making something obscure, unclear, or unintelligible. Now we're going to get into the crux of this, ladies and gentlemen. And then I'm going to read to you a list of federal agencies that sit on ANSI. And when you talk about these smart meters, you talk about quality control, ANSI has all of these federal agencies that are supposed to help you and I, and they're fucking us. By the way, I can use that term because Russ Cheney set that as a standard, as you heard, has set that as a standard for ANSI. ANSI, is a private, not-for-profit, non-governmental entity that has both federal agencies and corporations on board. 2015, Randy Dodry at the time was the vice president of ANAB. I told you about his, his dealings with the Department of Homeland Security. Well, this guy was on the IAF. So can we say there's a cybersecurity issue? Without a doubt, because he has the China National Intelligence Law Article number seven, which mandates espionage. And during his tenure there, or whatever, 2015 to 21, the Department of Homeland Security got their asses in a sling. Actually, I think they're giving the information away, sitting on ANSI's board. But Randy, at the time, was the vice president, of, in 2015, was the vice president of ANAB, the chairman on the IF, and also the principal, he had complete control, on the 990 tax form. Here we have Zhao Jinwu, if you didn't believe me. Here he is, standing in the lab, issuing them a laboratory certification at the BioLevel 4 lab in Wuhan. You have 10 different organizations, registrars, in China that can issue an ANAB accreditation. So if you don't think there's a cybersecurity issue, you got it mistaken. NIST has NIST uh, SP, um, well, SP800 that is supposed to be for cybersecurity like CMMM, CMMI, or actually CMMC and CMMI. And they're all under the guise of these organizations that are deeply embedded with China and other nefarious organizations. You have ANAB that sat on ANSI's board. As I said, ANSI and ANAB, um, ANSI and ANAB joined forces in 2018. You have the factor of underwriters. Many, many underwriters. ANSI and ANAB are underwriters for the International Accreditation Forum Incorporated in Delaware and also the International Laboratory Accreditation Cooperation in Australia. So that means if there's a systematic failure and a product failure within that system, ANSI and ANAB are liable for it. They're gonna tell you no, you know why? They're in bed with American Bar and they're in bed with the DOJ and FBI. And I have to laugh because every time Christopher Ray gets up, we must maintain vigilance over China. His organization was watched over by China from 2015 to 21. <laughs> and this is what an underwriter is, I'll hold it here a second. Okay, as I showed you, ANSI took over complete control over ANAP in 2018, and this is the kicker. Here they are sitting with all their corporations and federal agencies between 2015 and 2018 on ANSI's board. Okay, uh, actually on IAF, as a member of IAF, which is a repository for all these accreditation bodies. 
You know who's sitting by them? <laughs> Very nice. Iran and Pakistan. They are equivalent in accreditation to ANSI ANAB, which means they can go into Raytheon, they can go into Boeing and Lockheed, they can go into Pfizer and Johnson Johnson and actually do an audit and even certification with the National Accreditation of Iran and NASI, NCAI. <laughs> nice, isn't that nice? And by the way, Iran and Pakistan, the leadership admitted to harboring some of the terrorists of 9-11. And you have him who was uh, Osama bin Laden, who was harbored by no other than Pakistan. <clears throat> Under his leadership for the 20 years, all you had is failure. You have Johnson & Johnson, who skipped quality processors, who sits on ANSI. All these companies sit on ANSI. You have Pfizer that skipped quality processes and standards and pushed out the COVID vaccine, then they had to have a recall. You have Boeing, who most recently got caught not taking data from, I think, 2007 to 2018, not writing down different PSI and temperatures from their autoclaves for the V-22 Osprey, and we just had an Osprey go down and, I think, kill six American lives. Was it a quality issue? Of course it was. Should the auditor picked it up? I am sure if you're doing a systematic audit and you're looking at documentation and you are looking, I know when we had audits, when I was in aerospace with our autoclaves, you'd have the auditor for ISU come in and look at the data for the autoclaves and ovens. That was one of their first duties, I guess, because Boeing sits on ANSI's board. They also sit on the board of ANSI ANAP that can grant, suspend, and withdraw certification, I guess uh, they just, the auditors, ah, we'll, we'll sign you off. <laughs> Another one is this. They were also caught fudging documentation, Boeing was. You have Lockheed Martin, who most recently, after their production of the 801 F-35, 801st ship, still producing them under the guise of quality certification by ANSI ANAP. <laughs> And by the way, any organization that sits on IAF, that is an IAF MLA, which is a multilateral uh, agreement or arrangement, or an MRA, a multi-regional uh, arrangement or agreement, is equivalent in accreditation to ANAB. We have the data. You have the factor that Lockheed, after their 801st ship, is still producing shit, okay? And they all are talking about voluntary consensus. Unbelievable. And what they do is they shove it down your throat. Okay, if you're not ANAP accredited, we're not going to use you. Why? Because they sit on ANSI's board. And you know what IAF stands for? It always fails. So I'm going to stop it here. It's 20 minutes long. The last thing I'm going to do for you business owners and my fellow citizens is, you know something? You have to listen to this because these are some of the federal agencies that sit on ANSI's board. FAA. F Federal Housing Finance uh, Agency, the Federal Insurance Company, FTC, CDC, uh, Federal Housing Finance Agency, another one, Federal Trade Commission, FDA, NASA, National Archives and Records, National Institute of Health, NIST, U.S. Access Board, U.S. Bureau of Remediation, U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission. How are they going to fix this meter issue? They won't. They're in bed with them. Also, GE sits on ANSI's board who makes some of these smart meters. U.S. Department of Agriculture. U.S. Department of Agriculture, Livestock, Poultry, and Seed. U.S. Department of Agriculture for Animal Health. U.S. Department of Defense. In 2012 and 13, you had President Obama who signed a waiver so that China could build these special magnets for, <laughs> for the computer systems and landing gear doors on the F-35. Now you want to know where top secrets go. DOD sits there. They've been hacked nine times to Sunday. You have Department of Energy, Department of Homeland Security, Department of, um, Department of Justice, a U.S. Department of Justice Tobacco Firearms, U.S. Department of Justice FBI, U.S. Department of Justice Justice Management, U.S. Department of Interior Geological Survey, U.S. Department of Transportation Maritime Administration, U.S. Department of Transportation Pipeline Hazardous Materials and Safety Administration, U.S. Postal Service, U.S. Securities and Exchange, and Department of Health and Human Services. This is disgusting, so I'm going to leave it with this by Thomas Paine. 
It is impossible to comprehend the moral mischief, if I may so express it, that mental lying that ANSI, ANAB, IF, and ILAC does. It is impossible to comprehend the moral... <laughs> It is impossible to comprehend the moral mischief, if I may so express it, that mental lying has produced in our society. When a man or woman has so far corrupted and prostituted the chastity of their mind as to subscribe their professional beliefs to things they do not believe, they have prepared themselves a commission for every other crime. Can we say that about the Attorney General of Arkansas? Can we say that? Can we say that about the former Attorney General? Can we say that about those that are involved with these smart meters. We can say that because without a shadow of a doubt, you have the National Association of Attorney Generals sitting there uh, cavorting with the Department of Homeland Security. And Department of Homeland Security is, of course, a member of ANSI, ANAP. And they all sit on the IAF. My telephone number is 203-556-1493 or Daryl, TQRS at yahoo.com. And for the last time, I will say this, obfuscation. <laughs> they really distort a lot. And I'm sorry for the delay. I'm sorry for the length of this. But you have to know what this is. Corruption. Crony capitalism. Absolutely.